Hi guys, so today we're going to continue with covalent bonding, but the molecules or polyatomic ions that we draw today, they're going to be a little bit more complicated than the ones we drew in video two. Um, so, so let's take a look at these examples. So these are not compounds, these are polyatomic ions. So polyatomic means there's more than one atom, but what makes them ions and not compounds are that they have a charge. So this NO3 has a charge of negative one. This ICl4 has a charge of negative one. So um, when the atoms bonded together, their number of electrons also changed, giving the whole thing a charge, where compounds are normally um, having a charge of zero, they're neutral. So in order to draw covalent bonding in a polyatomic ion, we're gonna follow the same rules but we need to worry about that charge. So the first thing I wanna do is um, count up how many valence electrons are in each thing in the polyatomic ion. So I know that nitrogen has five, and um, I know that there are three oxygens, and each oxygen has six valence electrons, so three times six. Now, the same thing when we talked about ions in the atoms unit, um, if it's a negative ion, that means it gained electrons, positive ions lost electrons. We do the same thing here. For this to have a negative one charge, it must have gained one electron. So I have to add another electron to my count. So when I add all this up, I get that there should be a total of 24 electrons in my picture. Okay. So now to start my drawing, um, I'm just following the rules. Um, if there's one of an atom, I know that that has to be in the center. So I'm going to draw nitrogen in the center. The next rule says to attach the other atoms using single bonds. So here's my three O's. Um, and if you guys wanted to draw an O sticking out of the top, instead of on any of the other sides, you're allowed to do that. Um, this molecule, like in real life, in 3D, it's, it's like rotating around. So if you drew an O on the top, that would be fine too. All right, now the next rule is to give all of the atoms in the polyatomic ion an octet. So um, these, these lines here, remember that they have two electrons in them. So nitrogen has two, four, six electrons already. I need to add two more to make it eight. Each oxygen has a single bond attached to it, right? So if I do two, if they all have two electrons already, then I need to add six more to make them have eight. Because in a compound or in a polyatomic ion, everything wants to be stable. It wants to have eight valence electrons. Okay, now here's where you have to make sure you drew this right. You have to count all of your electrons and make sure they add up to 24. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So my number of electrons in my actual picture doesn't match the number of electrons my picture should have. So um, what you wanna do here is you wanna go back to your rules because there is a rule for that. And we wanna look at rule number six. It says, if not, this means that there's too many electrons. If there's too many electrons in your picture, you want to form a double bond somewhere. So you want to take away some electrons and make a double bond, and then we can recount and see if my, um, if my electrons add up to 24, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redraw this so that you guys have both drawings. Um, let's see, go back to my blue color. I'll do that color. Okay. So if I go back,
I'm going to draw you what I originally had to show you how I'm going to change this. All right, so you need to take one of these single bonds and you need to turn them into a double bond. Now, how you do that is you erase a pair of electrons from each atom that is participating in that double bond. So let's say that I want to draw the double bond right here. What I would have to do is erase electrons from nitrogen and erase a pair of electrons from the oxygen. And then I'm going to want to make this a double bond instead of a single bond. And now I could have put this double bond in any spot, and we're going to talk about that later. But I want to see now if my total number of electrons in my picture adds up to 24. So I'm going to count. I'll change my pen already just so that you guys don't have to draw this on your paper. I just want you to see where I'm counting. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So that's going to be my final picture. I added up to 24 electrons. Okay, so we had to use rule number six here. All right, this was too many electrons. All right, let's go down to this next one. Um, this is also a negative one polyatomic ion, but you'll see the problem when, when we draw it. So first thing I wanna do is count. So iodine has seven valence electrons, plus my four chlorines each have seven valence electrons. Since this is a negative one ion, I wanna add another electron. And when I add this up, my whole ion should have 36 electrons in it okay so i know that i need to put i in the middle because i only have one i and then i want to attach my cls with single bonds right next rule is to give everything an octet so guys iodine iodine has four bonds around it so that's two four six eight electrons iodine is good the chlorines need six more each to have an octet. Okay, so now I need to count all of my electrons and see if they add up to 36, okay? So guys, each chlorine has eight electrons around it, right? So if I do eight times four, that's 32. So this compound has not enough electrons. It only has 32 electrons. So now I need to go see rule number eight. So I'm gonna go back to my rules. All right, if not enough electrons, add extra to the central atom to violate the octet rule. So violating the octet rule means that that atom is stable, whether it has eight valence electrons or more than that or less than that. So here, if I'm adding electrons, I'm gonna have more than eight valence electrons on iodine. So I have 32 total in my picture. I have to get up to 36. So how many electrons do I need to add? I need to add four to that center atom. So I could just add, you wanna add them in pairs, guys. So I'll add two there and two there. So that iodine has a total of 10 electrons around it. Um, and that's allowed to happen if you have, um, if you have a atom that bonds using D orbitals. So anything that's like in the third period and higher on the periodic table, it's able to bond using D electrons as well, not just the valence shell. So that's why this is allowed to happen. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about that NO3 up there and um, why I could put that double bond wherever I wanted to. So when you guys draw Lewis dot diagrams, it's possible for the diagram to have more than one possible structure. So depending on who was drawing it, um, some of you might have wanted to put the double bond here 
Some of you wanted to put it here. I chose to put it there, right? So these are called resonance structures where the double bond really could have been anywhere. So the end result is just like an average of all the possible structures. So that double bond, it almost like it's almost like it could move around. So the electrons or the double bond can change its spot. And the reason it does that is it wants to decrease repulsion. and increase stability. So it'll kind of like rotate where it is, meaning it doesn't matter where you put it. Um, so something can have a resonance structure if it has a double or a triple bond somewhere and then other single bonds somewhere in the molecule so that it can switch places. All right. All right. So um, formal charges come into play when um, when a compound or a polyatomic ion has like more than one structure, um, what you really should do is you should assign formal charges to um, to every atom in the compound or the polyatomic ion. And your goal here is for each atom to have a formal charge of zero. Um, if each atom has a formal charge of zero, then that is the most stable structure and that should be the one that you draw. If you can't get a structure where the formal charge of every atom is zero, then the one with the higher electronegativity should at least have the negative formal charge. And then that's like your second best result. Okay. We know that things have higher electronegativities um, if they're further to the right and further up on the periodic table. So that's like going back to the periodic uh, trend unit. All right, so how do I calculate formal charge? So guys, this is an example of a compound having resonance structures. So, so I could have drawn this compound with a triple bond in it, or I could have drawn this compound with a double bond on either side of the C. If you count up the electrons in all of these drawings, um, they all add up to the appropriate number. So you might draw it and be like, okay, well, which one's the answer? Which one do I pick? So to calculate formal charge, you need to do number of valence electrons that the atom has, and then subtract that from the number of lone electrons plus the number of bonds on that atom. Okay, so let's do the first one as an example. Um, so nitrogen has five valence electrons. And I want to subtract that by, it's got two lone electrons here, plus three bonds. So five minus five equals zero. All right. Then I want to look at carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons minus, it's got no lone electrons, and it's got one, two, three, four bonds around it. So what's four minus four? Zero. Now let's look at oxygen. Just gonna erase this so it doesn't look messy. All right, now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has six of its own valence electrons minus it's got one, two, three, four, five, six lone electrons plus one bond attached to it. So six minus seven is negative one. Okay, so not all atoms have a formal charge of zero, but oxygen has the highest electronegativity of the three elements in here so the fact that the highest electronegativity is negative this this might be our our best answer but we have to check the other ones to make sure um, they're the same so now let's do this one together um, nitrogen has five minus there's six lone electrons on this nitrogen and one bond. So five minus seven is a negative two. Carbon has four valence electrons minus zero lone electrons and four bonds. Four minus four is zero. 
oxygen has six valence electrons minus two by themselves and three bonds. Six minus five is a positive one. Okay, so right away, guys, I see that this structure is worse than the first one because um, if anything, oxygen should have the negative charge and here it's positive and nitrogen is negative. So, so this is gonna be one that's no good. Um, what I want you guys to do now is I want you guys to calculate the formal charges on each one of the elements in this last compound. All right, I'm going to give you a multiple choice question to, to show me what you calculated. And then I want you to tell me of the three, which one would be the most stable compound that we should draw as our answer. Okay. Um, so guys, exceptions to the octet rule. Um, and this kind of we already talked about. So um, like I said, the valence shells can be expanded if there are d orbitals available. So that's your elements in period three or higher because that's when the d orbitals start to fill up. So the next couple slides are just some pictures of that. Um, if I count how many electrons are here, each double bond has four in it. So that's four, eight, 12. Um, and then two more on top. This has 14 electrons, xenon. So that's more than an octet. All right, if we look at our next examples, guys, um, we already saw iodine having two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons. All right, so that's again more than eight, but this is a stable structure. Um, here, if phosphorus has five bonds attached to it, it's got 10 electrons. So just another picture showing you that this can happen. Um, and here's something we haven't talked about. So boron is actually considered um, an underachiever, meaning that it could be stable with less than eight valence electrons. So um, if you look at all three of these less important drawings, um, if you count up the number of bonds around boron and think about how many electrons there are, there are eight valence electrons around boron, right? You might look at this one that says most important and be like, how is that, how is that better? So again, guys, if we do formal charges, boron has three valence electrons minus no lone electrons and three bonds. What's three minus three? Zero. And if I do fluorine, fluorine's got seven valence electrons minus six lone electrons plus one bond. What's seven minus seven? Zero. In this drawing, everything has a formal charge of zero, which is better than if you have formal charges other than zero. Okay? So boron can be stable with only three bonds. So that's important when you're, um, when you're doing your rules and you're trying to give everything an octet. Um, we need to remember like hydrogen is okay with only having two valence electrons. Boron is okay with only having three bonds. So there are exceptions. All right, last funky thing we're gonna talk about guys today is, um, is coordinate covalent bonding. So what happens is um, when you have a lone pair, like, like this NH3 molecule has a lone pair, both of those electrons belong to nitrogen. They're not participating in a bond. What can happen is if you have a hydrogen ion, now hydrogen only has one electron. To become a hydrogen plus one ion, that means that it's one valence electron is lost and hydrogen is floating around with no electrons at all. So what can happen is if a molecule has a lone pair, a hydrogen ion can attach itself in that spot and use both of nitrogen's electrons to get a full valence shell. So what can happen is we can get, I'll just redraw what's there already. 
Um, so guys, when, when there's like X's and dots, that's just like instead of using different colors. So the dots belong to nitrogen and the hydrogen has the X's for its valence electrons. Okay, now what can happen is my hydrogen can just plop itself right there. So this is a coordinate covalent bond. And both electrons are nitrogens. So it's different from a regular covalent bond in that um, in a regular covalent bond, each atom shares one electron back to the other atom. Like everybody brings something. Coordinate covalent bonding, the hydrogen just uses both of the electrons that belong to the other atom. Now, since we added a positive hydrogen ion to this neutral compound, forming a co coordinate covalent bond actually makes this a polyatomic ion. It makes it have a charge of plus one. All right. Same thing happening here, guys. Um, water has two lone pairs on it right here and right here. Um, so if there's a hydrogen ion floating around, it can add itself to a water molecule and use both of those electrons to fill itself up. So I'll draw what we have there already. So there's oxygen's lone pair. Here's hydrogen attaching itself to it. So that's a CC bond, coordinate covalent bond. And again, guys, water's neutral now that I added a positive ion to it it's going to get a plus one charge. It's going to become a polyatomic ion. Okay. All right. So guys, this, this whole video kind of got into exceptions to the rules and, and a little bit more complicated kinds of molecules. So um, I'll give you some questions to answer and then we'll spend a lot of time uh, practicing this tomorrow. All right. Have a good day.